Hello everyone, and welcome to the Let's Play of Kaiser Reich. We're going to be playing the Combined Syndicates of America today. Um, I played quite a bit of the American Civil War in the mod, but um, never really touched the CSA because I'm not a commie fuck. Um, <coughs> so despite our long history, radicalism has risen, and now the Republic is at a standstill. Well, that didn't end well for Russia. Fascism LARP. Right. Voting commences on the Garner-Wagner bill. Uh, we will go with... Bill is approved. A socialist revolution in Cuba. Dire news has arrived from Cuba today after weeks of instability and despite providing the Cuban military with ample equipment and training, socialist agitators have overthrown the Cuban government. Uh, you guys are a little ahead of time, but uh, we'll just be diplomatic for now. Oh. Uh, our version of Alex Jones is um, causing some issues on the radio waves. Uh, let's get rid of him. Ah, yes, the first international congress. But uh, don't worry, we'll be there for part two. Increasing radicalization. Very cool. Mayday riots. Definitely the police's fault. Ah, yes, our Polish brothers. Our brothers in arms over here in the east, completely surrounded by uh, German puppet states, but that's okay. I'm, I'm sure nothing bad will happen to the Poles, because nothing bad ever happens to the Poles in history, so I'm sure they'll be totally fine. Arthur speaks to Hoover. Uh-oh. That's not good. Ah, yes, the time has come. Execute order, Jackety Reed. President Reed's inaugural address. The country's social problems have forced the American people to turn to radical solutions. The two-party system has broken down, and Jack Reed is to be sworn in as the 31st president of the United States, as Norman, with, our, with Norman Thomas being sworn in as the vice president. In a stirring speech in Washington, D.C., Reed has pledged to defend the interests of the worker and work to help revolutionary societies for the good of all Americans. However, the SPA's slim majority in Congress means that it may find it challenging to pass meaningful legislation, especially in the Senate, where the AFP has promised to filibuster any law it sees as detrimental to America. Let the people rejoice. So, Reed just became president. So that means we need to decide whether he's going to focus on reforms or the longest. Um, I've done quite a lot of focusing on the opposition when I play other um, routes. So I think I'm going to try out the reforms and just see what happens. Executive Order 7080. Labor unions. One of Reed's first acts as president to enshrine the rights to collectively bargain in law. Unwilling to Walt to overcome the Senate filibuster, and citing the violent conflict between AFP and SPA mil paramilitaries, Reed passed an executive order that forced state and federal governments to recognize a union's right to exist and engage in collective bargaining. Without exception, thus forbidding the yellow dog contracts. While the unions rejoice, many in the country denounce the executive order as a tyrannical act the executive branch for the union makes us strong all right MacArthur marches on Washington good old Star Wars reference my allegiance was to the Republic MacArthur to democracy all right and here we go President Reed escapes to Chicago President Reed has escaped to Chicago and declared that MacArthur is a traitor to all of the American people. His calls have gained a great deal of support in the Steel Belt, and a number of governors have already announced that they do not recognize the illegitimate authority of the current government. They have closed off their borders to American soldiers, raising a chilling specter of the Civil War the country experienced less than a century ago. The disaster has begun, or the revolution has begun. Stand by the workers. And we're going to play as the CSA think the next big thing will be to focus on the second continental army we're gonna go get them we get a bunch of buffs for our divisions which is very helpful at least those men now 
And then uh, the deadline looms. I don't think any more states are going to be flocking over. Uh, yep, deadline continues to loom. Jesus, you get a huge penalty and stability if you do not attend. Um, we're, of course, we're going to attend. So we're off to London. Everybody declares war. Yes, All right. Let's get moving. It's already fall of Washington. Syndicate militias have advanced towards and captured the symbolic capital of the United States, Washington, D.C. They stormed the Capitol building and met strong resistance, but eventually they broke through the, and the flag of the combined syndicates of America now flies over the U.S. Capitol. I think we'll be able to deal with the Federalists pretty easily. It looks like they're spread too thin. That, that or they just completely abandoned the eastern seaboard. As the revolution near success, the people demanded that we deal with the corrupt capitalist politicians in office before the revolution. Uh, they shall watch as the world leaves them behind and makes them irrelevant. Austria-Hungary explodes. Looks like MacArthur has kind of abandoned North Carolina here. And we're starting to come in f contact with longists. Should we focus on reaching those in our territory, keeping our own morale up, or should we spread our message throughout enemy territory and sap their will to fight against, to, will to fight their liberators? Uh, we're gonna focus on the socialist family. Loyalists in Pennsylvania. Uh oh. Shit. Let's just push along the railway here. Try and break them up what we can. Yeah, I think the federal government's pretty much done at this point. It's an unfortunate pact that there are spies and saboteurs within our territory working to prevent a glorious liberation. However, orders within the Central Committee, including Chairman Reed, wonder if this is necessary. Hmm. CIA will be created. Let's do it. Just secret police this shit. There we go. Kentucky has fallen. Yep. There they go. Federal collapse. Doing crazy encirclements. Look at look at what the f what the fuck happened here? The Dutch send volunteers. Uh, did they go syndicalist? Um. Uh. Did I miss something? What? You know what? I'm not gonna complain. America, really, really, Virgil is. There you go. You're being put under cannon. He'll take good care of you. You'll be right on the front lines, really making a difference where it matters most. Our support equipment. Yeah, it's a good thing we've got our uh, socialist friends across the sea because I honestly don't know what we would do without all these equipment shipments because we probably would have run out by now. Oh, here we go. This might be it for long. Come on. Come on. Nice. Oh, there it is. It just keeps on going. Slowly but surely. Fuck. Not gonna lie, not really what I needed right now. Man, the game's gonna be over by the time we're like, finished rebuilding the United States. Like, we're not really even gonna be able to do much of anything. Like, Europe is already so red, like, I don't... I don't even know if we're gonna get a chance to even do anything else. Yeah, I think the Pacific states are at the point of collapse now. We are about to break through. Well, these guys are cut off now. Probably try to escape through the port. Maybe not. 
get our air support back up here. That'll really buy us some support. Once San Fran falls, that'll really be like a fucking death snail in there. Californian stronghold has fallen. Yep, there it is. Yikes. Germany's looking like a yikes right now. Poland holding out, though. Alright, let's see if we can't break Boston. Nice. We've occupied Ottawa and currently have the Canadians on the run. Perhaps the time has come to make peace, lest we find ourselves dragged down in their expansive territory. Maybe they'll give us like a peace deal offer type thing. Uh, okay. Oh, did they just abandon New England? Was that all they did? Oh, there they go. All right, the end of the Second American Civil War. What could have been the greatest capitalist oppressor of the 20th century is now firmly under the control of the working class. Throughout the country, the working class celebrates its liberation from the depredations of their bourgeois masters. While there is still much to do, today we can celebrate this victory and savor the air of an America where, for the first time, each man is truly equal. Solidarity forever. <laughs> America is reunited. At long last, all of America is now part of this combined syndicates of America. The revolution has achieved its uh, major victory, and the people have been unshackled from the chains of capitalism. All are waving, all are waving, all are waving the red flag of socialism from California to New York Island. While the scars of the revolution are everywhere, we can look forward to bringing the revolution to everyone. This land is your land. Alright. With the Civil War won and the combined syndicates in power, it is time for a second constitutional convention. Ooh, we're going to decide the interim president. Constitutional Convention begins. Today, delegates have gathered from across the country in the city of Philadelphia as the second constitutional... All right, let's, fuck, let's start it. Today, delegates have gathered from across the country in the city of Philadelphia as the second constitutional convention is convened in order to draft a new and better constitution for America. Initial controversy erupts as the AFL brought their own delegation in spite of orders from the IWW to let them represent the whole of industrial labor. Other interest groups that swore allegiance to Reed have also shown up, including members of the defunct Knights of Labor and the National Civic Federation. The most important of these smaller labor federations is the Trade Union Unity League. This organization, represented by Earl Browder and William Foster, represent a resurgence of vanguardism in the states. A small riot on the second day erupted when the International Peace Mission and Southern Tenant Farmers Union were ejected from the convention. These unions have been neutral during the revolution and were initially accepted due to their high percentage of black membership. Loyalists to the old order are not invited. All right. Oh, we got to decide the fate of Puerto Rico. Oh, we can actually make it a core state. That's pretty cool. Socialist constitution. System of government. So we can go for either trade union councils or we can move towards councils of professional workers. Let's let's try councils of professional workers. All right, socialist constitution, the framework. Article 1. All power in America derives from the people and belongs to the people. Article 2. All the representative organs of state authority are elected by the citizens on the basis of universal, equal and direct suffrage by secret ballot to the respective unions bid. Article 3. No law or administrative or local rules and regulations shall contravene the Constitution. Approved. All right. Human rights and workers' rights. Article 6. Citizens are guaranteed the freedom of the press, freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of assembly, the freedom to hold public meetings and demonstrations. Article 7. 
Women have equal rights with men in all fields of state, economic, and social, social political life. Article 8. Citizens of America are guaranteed inviolability of the, pers of the person. Article 9. The state promises working people the right to associate and organize themselves to collectively bargaining units. Socialist Constitution, the judiciary. The IWW has made a strong impression for removing the Supreme Court as the final appeal for constitutionality, instead making the appellate courts carry that weight. Reminding members of the convention of the court's track record for legalizing <coughs> oppression of unions and downright reactionary laws, Elizabeth Gurley Flynn remarked that preserving the unelected position of a final legal decision could lead to authoritarianism. To the surprise of many, Earl Browder of the TUUL dissented, arguing that this discrimination was the result of a corrupt party system and not an inherent flaw in the United States Constitution. To Browder, removing the Supreme Court would endanger the unity of the nation and lead to more schisms as had happened in Bolshevik Russia. The AFL have quietly dissented with their vanguardist cohort and pledged to support Flynn if a resolution passes. Um... Yeah, we're going to axe the Supreme... This is Constitution Economics. <laughs> Article 15. The foundation of the economic system of America is socialist ownership of the means of production in the form of public property, belonging to all the people and collective cooperative property. Article 16. All mineral and other wealth underground, the waters, including mineral and medicinal waters, the sources of natural power, the means of rail and air transport, posts, telegraphs, telephones, and broadcasting are public property. The land belongs to those who cultivate it. The property of collective farms and other cooperative organizations and of their joint undertakings compromises the means of production and other assets which they require for the purposes laid down in their rules. The land held by collective farms is secured to them for their free use in perpetuity. Article 18. Private property and private initiative and economy are guaranteed. The inheritance of private property is guaranteed. The right of inheritance is regulated by the state. No person is permitted to use the right of private property to the detriment of the people's community. The existence of private monopolist organizations such as cartels, syndicates, trusts, and similar organizations created for the purpose or repurposed for dictating prices, monopolizing the market, and damaging the interests of the public economy is forbidden. Private property may be limited or expropriated if the common interest requires it, but only in accordance with the law. It will be determined by law in which cases and to what extent the owner shall be compensated. Under the same conditions, individual branches of national economy or single enterprises may be nationalized by law if the common interest requires it. Socialist constitution, status of the president. A surge of unaligned delegates have attempted to leave for recess several times to no avail. <coughs> It appears that the issue of executive power has met an impasse, and a decision must be made before the delegates starve in indecision. On one side is the IWW, whose plan for a complete anarcho-syndicalist government requires there not to be an executive officer. Their belief is that a president is an inherently reactionary populist position, and they will ensure that a person like Huey Long can never rise to power in the new America. Thomas suggests a weak head of state position. The opposition is another co uh, cooperation of the AFL and TUUL, who wish for a strong face to represent America. A leader without the means, argue they, could never save America as Reed did without power. Norman Thomas has condemned the AFL for what he sees as a boulangist coup uh, perpetrated by the AFL and TUUL to revive the old federal government. John L. Lewis of the AFL rises to object, saying subordination to the IWW program is no different than a single-party state. Let's go with a weak head, because I'm sure most people will pick uh, president with power, but we'll go with a weak head. More decentralized. Oh. Oh, damn. Canada going whole hog on Cuba right now. And they're at war with Mexico. I wonder if they join the Third International. Some of them did, yes. Socialist constitution, centralization or decentralization. The convention, after resuming, has found themselves more divided than ever. The core of the IWW has galvanized into a stricter dogma that pushes for the remaining articles to protect against tyranny of a central government, demanding protection through the lifetime assurance of union membership and compounding social security with lifelong employment. Several IWW delegates have impl uh, implied that the AFL has been antagonistic and would prefer a return to capitalism. In response, the AFL has been swayed by TUUL to emphasize the dignity of labor and government. This argument rebukes industrial unionism with craft unionism, where the right to fair wages for fair work done replaces the IWW's goal of the abolition of wages. Browder again takes the stage, calling to protect craft unionism as it prevents a tyranny of the 51% over the 49% in union elections. Let's go with dignity of labor will stop tyrants. We've been siding with the syndicalists quite heavily, so... Well, rest in peace, Cuba. Ooh, socialist constitution, the capital. One of the last things to be decided is the capital of, the Uni of America. While many are advocating for Washington, D.C. as the location of the new capital, as it was the old capital, and it easily fits that purpose. Others are advocating for the loyal cities of Chicago, Philadelphia, and New York City. Which shall the convention choose? Hmm. Uh, I don't really like Chicago. Washington was not loyal so I think it's honestly between Philadelphia and New York I think I'll go with Philadelphia because that's where the new constitution was drafted so we'll go with that I think that's fitting all right constitutional convention has concluded 
The Constitutional Convention has finally come to an end, and the new Constitution of America has been written. The delegates are returning to their home states with a new set of allies and rivals. Despite the optimism expressed in the congratulatory photos, the real work of rebuilding the country has just begun. Long live the workers of America. The Totalist Party will now be called the Trade Union Unity League. The Syndicalist Party will now be called Workers' Party of America. Long live the workers of America. That's pretty neat. Mention is complete, so it's time to decide the interim president. On the final day of the Congress, John Silas Reed, better known as Jack Reed, announced that he would step down as the leader of the country. Rumors of his deteriorating health were kept away from the press, a gentleman's ag agreement of sorts. Jack Reed proclaims he will spend his remaining time with his wife, Louise, and his daughter. Moreover, Reed emphasized his role was to see the country through the, to the revolution, but a new leader needs to lead it now. Of the attendees at the Congress, two have gained the most prominence. One is Elizabeth Gurley Flynn of the IWW, who has begun a national campaign to excite voters for a possible female president, namely herself. The other is Norman Thomas, who has led SPA delegates to work with Social Democrats to pledge votes to him. There is an understanding that even through this position of leadership, even though this position of leadership is interim until the election, it still will allow either president to exert a great deal of influence over the country's groundwork. I think we're going to go with Flynn. I think uh, in this more left-wing United States, I think people would be eager to see uh, a woman. So we're going to go with that. Commonwealth of America focus completed. The Commonwealth of America rises. Following a harrowing civil war, the old hegemony of the American continent has been painted red with the colors of revolutionary syndicalism. Having successfully overthrown the federal government in Washington and crushed the counter-revolution launched by Huey Long, the combined syndicates of America called for a second constitutional convention in order to lay the groundwork for a new nation. During this lengthy deliberation, numerous factions bickered, debated, and discussed until consensus was reached. The new America has rejected the growing threat of totalism and tyranny in favor of a socialist republic maintaining the spirit of American freedom. It remains to be seen how stable the new government will be and if the syndicalists can successfully root out capitalism in their new bastion of liberty. Long live our comrades in America. Cool. Commonwealth of America. That's an interesting looking flag. All right. It's a very different direction for the United States. I feel like most people probably go for like a communist or, oh, well, I suppose, totalist route with Earl Browder, but I think uh, syndicalism in a more decentralized government is much more interesting. Um, kind of keeps, it, it's kind of like an American brand of like socialism, like, you know, the federal government guarantees the rights of the workers and the people, but you know, tries not to be oppressive and top-down, try to do it from the bottom-up type type thing. Fall of Delhi. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I, I think the Entente is just complete toast. I, I really don't think that they can come back from how badly they got whooped. Uh, I mean, like, they lost India... They've got South Africa and the French colonies. I think them and the Reichspact are working together, so maybe that's why Germany's still holding out. But, like, I mean, if you look, like, they're on the doorstep of Vienna. They still can't seem to put down Poland for whatever reason. And, like, I I crunched a huge number of their, their guys up here. So, I, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but, um, this is it, the dying gasp of an old Europe, there goes Vienna, princely federation is victorious.
Yep, this is certainly going to be a new Europe, that's for sure. Savinkov in the east and his national populace with Gwynaf, Fracon, and Oswald Mosley and their leftists, their communists slash syndicalists. There it goes. Focus on the longest. Oh, there it goes. Paris against Moscow. Second Well Creek did not end with Germany's fall, but continued as the Entente and the International clashed in North Africa and in the North Atlantic. Now renewed hope for the Entente is lit in the forges of the Russian war machine. All along the border between the Russian and French spears, Sir Winston Churchill's twilight struggle has erupted into a struggle for world order so bloodly it seems to put the war of 1939 to shame. Beyond the front lines, the citizens of the warring powers are in danger like never before. With the advent of aerial death machines that threaten to obliterate whole cities within hours of declarations of war. As both sides mobilize, the few remnants of the pre war peace wonder will Europe ever rest? Evidently not. Cost of this, but we really need some XP. Maybe we can send some volunteers or something to help people out. Um. How many can we send? We can send one division. Um, do we have anybody who's like super elite? Sure, we'll send the North Dakota Continental Guard. Alright, and we'll send it to France. Some air volunteers. There we go. Yeah, that's what kind of sucks about the American Civil War is that you honestly enter a point where the war and the rest of the world is kind of decided if you decide to do like a full blown Civil War. Like, because I mean, between the CSA. Like, you can shorten the Civil War, but if, like, if you do it like I did, where there's the CSA, the American Union State, the Pacific States, MacArthur, and then eventually New England and Canada, like, you're, that's a huge Civil War you're looking at. And, um, I'm sure there's a much better way to play it, where you're, um, more efficient and you get it done quicker, but, um... You know, I'd, I'd still like America to kind of come in later in the game and be able to do something. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like this one's honestly kind of done. I don't think there's anything, like, interesting we really have left to do. We could go after Japan, but, like, is that going to be interesting? Like, I don't think that's going to be interesting to watch. And not only that, we're going to have to fight through all their puppets. We're going to have to fight in India. Like, I just don't think it's worth it. I think for the sake of this, it's... It's it. Really. I don't think there's anything more interesting that you can do. You can fight little proxy battles here, but... Uh, which is why I think, I don't know, this is like interesting from like the perspective of, you know, America going red in a civil war and seeing how they try to reshape society. But I think in terms of, um, of long-term optics, like there's just not a lot. Like I think America is probably better suited as an Entente ally that can come in and kind of give them some power for their invasions of Europe. I think that with the way it is, they just, I, I don't know, it's just not very interesting. Yemen has capitulated, rip. The Ottomans came back, that is a different one for sure. I, I don't know, I don't think I've ever really seen that, but they've got, whoa, they've got huge bonuses against these countries, Jesus. Ottoman Empire has rediscovered its martial spirit and is rapidly turning the tide of war. Yeah, no kidding. A fully weaponized battle station. How many Star Wars references are there in this game? 
Honestly, I think that's it. We could try and go take Hawaii. I don't really see the point, though. I'm sure there's not going to be anything special to it. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. Um, this is the state of the world at the end of the game. Um, Third International, I think, definitely has the upper hand. The only ones who could really give them a run for their money is Japan. So yeah, that's it. That's uh, the end of my CSA run. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It was uh, very, very cool to see that path flushed out. Um, I'm sure you can make a, a number of different choices. Uh, it looks like Earl Browder was a choice, a path we could have gone down, but wanted to see what the more um, temperate, non, like, hardcore radical uh, approach was with syndicalism. Um, but yeah, cool little aspects that you can do that pertain mostly to like America, especially with the like African American and uh, women's liberty type things that were going on with the social revolution were cool to see. Um, but yeah, let me know if you would like to see me play any other factions in the American Civil War or maybe a different country. Um, I've played just about all of the major countries, um, and they, they're all pretty fun. They've all got their own unique paths that are flushed out, so thank you for joining me, and uh, see you guys next time. And just because he's a worker, no class can free him but his own. The emancipation of the working class is the task of the worker alone. So left to three, so left to three, to the work that we must do. March on in the workers' united front, for you are a worker.